Hello everyone and welcome to my very first Fallout 76 video in which I used my own footage that I captured while playing the game myself. So exciting. <laughs> I got to play the entire four hour first beta session on Xbox and I recorded the whole thing which I was really thrilled about since at first some stuff in my real life were going to allow me to only play two hours. Uh, but things worked out in my favor at the last minute and I was able to play the entire four hours. Anyway, in this video I would just like to give you guys my first impressions and in the coming days I'll be making some more focused videos on different topics. I would also love to hear from you guys down below in the comments what topics you'd like me to cover first. Uh, but before we get any further in this video, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of my patrons, John Coleman. Thank you so much for your support. I appreciate it so much. So first off, I would just like to answer the main question that I'm sure most, if not all of you are wondering, did I like the game? <laughs> and the answer to that is yes. It was the fastest four hours of my life. <laughs> it just flew by. It's definitely not enough time to really get immersed. Um, I felt rushed a lot of the time, but that is to be expected when you have a, um, a limited amount of time to play. Um, I, I caught myself wasting a lot of the time doing my usual Fallout things, that being exploring every nook and cranny for loot and taking way too much time deciding what specials I wanted to invest perks in. <laughs> I kept catching myself, realizing I wasn't getting anywhere very fast, and I was on the clock, and I wanted to do as much as possible, you know? But, you know, that didn't do any good, I think. If you're like me, and one of your favorite parts of playing a Fallout game is exploring and looting, then you're in for a treat. Um, since I took my time, I didn't get very far from the vault, so I, so I haven't seen a huge amount of the map so far. What I did see felt big. It felt wild and full and empty and strange and familiar, if that makes any sense. It felt familiar because it felt like a Fallout game. It felt strange because it was so different at the same time. Everything's not as destroyed or run down. Pre-war food is even irradiated, which confused me at first. You know, when you eat something in Fallout 4, you usually cook your own food and don't bother with that pre-war stuff because it's got so many rads, right? Well, it's the exact opposite in Fallout 76. Pre-war food doesn't have rads, but the food you cook does. So at first I was cooking food to eat for when I got hungry and avoiding the pre-war stuff, not noticing that it was rad-free. And when I finally noticed, I was like, what the heck? <laughs> anyway. I don't know if there are perks you can take eventually that allow you to cook rad free fruit. I hope there are. Otherwise, I'll be more inclined to eat pre-war stuff all the time. So I played the entire four hours by myself. I didn't interact with anyone. I wasn't a part of anybody's team. Um, right out of the vault, there were a lot of other players around since we'd all just come out of the vault at the same time. But the longer we were in the game, the more spread out we became. I followed the main quest for the first two hours or so, and so did a lot of other people, but there weren't more than five or six or so other people within sight at any given time, and usually only one or two. Um, I followed the main quest as far as the town of Grafton, and once I was done there, I decided to split off and do some exploring for the last two hours not following the main quest anymore. And after I left that route, the route of the main quest, I didn't see or hear any other players for like the last two hours of the game and that's when I really started getting immersed in the world and the game and I did a couple side quests which were actually pretty fun um one I think it was a side quest or it might have been part of the main quest I can't remember uh was at a military training facility that was run by Mr. Gussies you could take the automated training course to qualify for enlistment into the now extinct U.S. Army. It gave me quite a bit of experience. I think I leveled up from it and it gave me some caps too, which I discovered are very hard to find. Caps are probably one of the rarest of the common loots. I found more ammo than I found caps. Like by the end of the four hours, I had a little over 200 caps. 
And I found like maybe 10 of those as loot. Yeah. All the rest of my caps were earned by completing quests. And you don't really get a lot from completing quests. Um, like maybe around 20 caps or so per quest, quest completion or stage completion. I think that military training course had like four stages and each stage gave me caps. I think if I'm remembering it correctly, don't quote me on that. <laughs> So earning caps is going to be a challenge, at least at first, unless you just do tons of quests right away, which isn't hard to do since there are tons of quests to do. I was constantly finding like dead bodies that had notes or holotapes on them, and almost all of them started some kind of quest. Most were pretty small, but others had branching objectives that took a little longer. Other times I'd get quests just by walking into an area. And on the map, I could see many different public events taking place, uh, but none were close enough to run to easily, and I didn't feel like fast traveling there. As you guys probably know if you watch my Let's Plays, I don't like fast traveling. In this game, I may make an exception, since it's so huge, at least when I'm not role playing. Uh, but even then, I don't like to fast travel into areas that I've never been before. And all the events I saw were in areas I'd not been to yet. So I probably won't be joining events at first, unless they start right near me. Uh, one did start near enough to me to give me a notification about it and asked me if I wanted to fast travel to it. But I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I know. You guys are probably thinking I'm crazy, but... We all play the way we like to play, right? No wrong way or right way, just my way and your way, right? <laughs> Anyways, I have to admit, it's going to take me a little while to get used to the controls. That's something I struggled with through the whole thing. Like, in four hours of gameplay, I still kept forgetting how to open my map versus the Pip-Boy. I accidentally went into VATS like twice, but when I actually wanted to use it in combat, I couldn't remember which button it was. <laughs> Most of the buttons are different from Fallout 4. I kept pressing the ones I was familiar with, but they didn't do what I thought they would do, you know? <laughs> My button for stim packs in Fallout 4 is the button for the emote wheel in 76, and you know what? Emotes don't heal you. <laughs> I'm sure I'll get the hang of it, I just need more time. During my playtime, I didn't encounter any new types of enemies um, or creatures. A few feral ghouls, some wild dogs, mole rats, rad roaches, mirelurks, rad stags, super mutants. You know, that kind of thing. And one spunky little rad rat. Oh, wait. I did see one new creature. It was an opossum. It wasn't hostile and tried running from me. I killed it, though, of course. The thing had three heads. <laughs> and another thing I saw more than once were groups of house cats just wandering around together. And when I got close to them, they ran off. Weird. Okay, so a few notes about combat. I took the advice of Mr. Maddie Plays, I think it was, and stuck with a melee weapon most of the time, since bullets are rare. I never cared for playing as a melee character in any Fallout games, but this time it was a lot of fun. Maybe because you actually do a lot of damage with melee at low levels and not so much with guns. It seems like I could kill a robot with about three or four hits with my axe, but it took a dozen bullets to do the same damage. And yeah, bullets are hard to find. They are not in every container you loot anymore. They're only in ammo containers, and those aren't very common. I also found a few boxes of ammo sitting out on shelves and stuff, but really only in military areas. Same goes for Stimpaks and Radaway and Radex. The only containers they're found in is first aid kits, which seems to be more common than ammo containers. I think I found nine stim packs in my four hours and ended up using all but three in a tough fight with a level 32 Mr. Gutsy type robot, which was part of the military training course. That quest actually warned me that the section where I had to fight robots was pretty tough and should be done as a group. It was tough and I used most of my stim packs, but I managed it fine enough by myself. There was plenty of cover and the thing never charged me. And other enemies seem to be pretty weak, but not 
not more so than in Fallout 4, I think. It takes about two shots to bring down a ghoul before level 6 in Fallout 4, right? And the same is true for 76. I've seen people comment about how easy the enemies are, but I didn't find them to be too easy. At least not any easier than their Fallout 4 counterparts at the same levels. And the enemies that were over my level were very tough, obviously. I ran into some level 10 super mutants and my shots were doing diddly squat to them. Besides, it was quite dark, so I hightailed it. <laughs> I feel like nighttime in 76 is darker than Fallout 4 Vanilla Nights. Especially under the trees, it's pretty dark under trees. There was one point where I left the trees and went out into what looked like a dry lake or river or something, and I thought it was getting light out, like it was morning, but it was actually only 10 p.m. <laughs> the difference was very noticeable, so you'll definitely be using your pit boy light a lot at night, even when just traveling. I used it all night long, except when I was trying to hide from enemies. So I died only once during my four hours, and that was only because I started having issues with my monitor. Somehow it disconnected right when I was in the middle of fighting a Mire Lurk, and suddenly I couldn't see a thing. The screen just went black. And of course I couldn't pause the game either, it being online and all. So I just ran blindly trying to get away. And, and then later found out that I was staring at the ground the whole time and shooting the ground too. <laughs> but then I got stuck against something and couldn't get away and it killed me. But when I died, I could see on the map my death location. And I was able to respawn at a nearby location that I just discovered, the place where I'd actually encountered the Mirelurk in the first place. And I was able to run back to where I died and pick up all my junk that got dropped. Oh, speaking of junk, there's a lot of it. All the same stuff from Fallout 4, plus a ton of new stuff. Unfortunately, your carrying capacity is halved compared with Fallout 4. However, when you get over-encumbered, you're not reduced to an agonizingly slow walk. You can still walk at your normal pace, but you start using AP, just like in Fallout 4, when you have rank 3 and strong back. And so once your AP is all used up, then you, then you slow walk until you gain some your AP back. However, you can no longer sprint when you're over encumbered. So if you encounter enemies while you're over encumbered, that could be a problem if you have to run away really fast. I became over encumbered twice in my four hours and I was looting everything constantly. I think it's easier to manage your inventory in Fallout 76 though because it allows you to scrap junk items at any crafting station. And the base components are lighter than the items they came from. So whenever I came across a chem station or an arbor bench, I just scrap all my junk and then keep on looting. And throughout the world, you'll find stashes. Uh, these are boxes where you can store all your stuff and it's like a cloud storage. So if you put stuff in one stash, you'll be able to access it again from another one somewhere else. And also, when you when you activate a crafting station and use one, it will draw from your stash box for components, so you don't have to worry about storing crafting materials. No matter where you are in the world, you'll be you'll be able to use those items even if you don't have them in your inventory. So I thought this was a very nice feature, and I wish it was in Fallout 4. <laughs> it would solve a lots of my problems. <laughs> anyway. I was so caught up in playing the game, exploring, and doing quests that I completely forgot to test out the camp system until I had only a half an hour left on my time. So as it was getting dark in the game, I quickly found a flat place and put my camp down and tested out a few things. Uh, most of the items that you can build are locked at first and you need to find the plans for them before you can build them. Um, I don't think the plans are going to be too hard to find, though. At least I hope not. I found six of them, such as water pumps and doors and stuff. Um, the building menu will take some getting used to, as it feels backwards from Fallout 4s. I felt like it did way more scrolling. Um, there's a lot more categories of, of items. So you, you have to scroll through more categories to find your stuff. So it feels like I scrolled a lot more than I do in Fallout 4's build menu. Um, I can't say if I like it better or not. I've heard other people say that it's better, and maybe it is. 
but I only played with it for about 20 minutes, so I can't really confirm or deny that. I can say that the build area is tiny. Tinier than the smallest settlement in Fallout 4. Probably a little smaller than Overland Station, or maybe as big as Hangman's Alley. Maybe. Um, once you drop the camp unit, it activates the workshop, and you can place the camp unit anywhere you want, just like any other item in the workshop. Uh, you can move it around and put it exactly where you want it. You can see the build area, the build area border, move around with you. So you can put your borders pretty much wherever you want them to be, with, with some limitations, obviously. I tried to place my camp at the base of a hill next to a cliff, <laughs> uh, but it wouldn't let me because the ground wasn't level. You have to place it on level ground so you can easily place it down again if you blueprint it and later move it. And you want the ground to, you know, be similar to its previous locations. So the best bet is to just have it on a flat surface. Um, and speaking of blueprinting, that's super easy and really straightforward. You just push the button for blueprinting. Then you group select all the built items in your camp, which is super easy. And once they're all selected, you press X to make the blueprint and it's done. Then you can go to your Blueprints tab and access any blueprints that you have at any time. And you choose it just like you choose anything in the build menu and it becomes a placeable object in your build menu. Your entire structure that you built becomes a single placeable object and you can place it wherever you want. And you can adjust its height or its angle or whatever. I noticed that your blueprinted buildings will even snap to each other. I didn't test it for some reason, I don't know why, but it looks like you can combine blueprinted buildings with each other and even make duplicates of them. So like you could make a line, you could like build one building and blueprint it and then just slap down several of them in a row. At least that's what it seems to be. I didn't test that, but it seems to, it seems like it would work that way. Um, I'll be doing more testing of the camp building system in the next play session. And I was planning on that being the subject of my first hands-on topical video. Um, what do you guys think? I'm very eager to get back in and test out more stuff. It kills me that I waited until I had only 30 minutes left before I tested any camp stuff, but I got so caught up in the game that I completely lost track of time. Oh, a quick addition to the camp thing. Um, you cannot scrap the trees inside your camp's build area. Um, you now get wood from looting logs, which are everywhere, and of course from junk items made of wood. And probably that goes for anything inside your camp area. Um, in the area where I had my camp, there were only trees. But probably if you had, you know, buildings or, you know, other kinds of scrap or whatever in the build area, you probably wouldn't be able to scrap at them either. So you have to get all of your building materials from junk. Anyways, you guys, I think that about covers my initial thoughts and observations. There were more, of course, and I can talk all night about every tiny detail, but I'll spare you guys. I don't want this video to be super long and I want to save some stuff for the other videos, right? So look for more videos on the different things in Fallout 76 on my channel in the coming days. I'll try to get them out as often as possible, which will be kind of a feat right now because all of my kids and my husband got the flu. So <laughs> I'm a busy mama this week. And with Red Dead Redemption 2 coming out tomorrow, well, yeah, I'm busy. <laughs> Everything collides. Everything always collides, doesn't it? All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Let me know down in the comments what you think of everything that I said. And if you've played it, if you've played the game already, if you were in the beta, let me know down below what you guys thought, what your experiences were. I would love to know about it. And if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure you do so you don't miss anything and push that bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. And if you'd like to help support my channel, the links to my Patreon and coffee pages are in the description, along with my social media if you'd like to follow me on Facebook or Twitter to keep up to date with what I'm doing behind the scenes. Alright, until next time you guys, remember to play safe, play nice, and have fun. Bye.